8. Doc Rose or Frappuccino answering? You decide. But you know what the reality is today? This is a straight up Doc Rose strong coffee, if you will, prepared for you. Hi, I'm James, and welcome again to the Doc Rose and Frappuccino answering. In the opening of number eight, yes, I already answered the question for you on the part as you decide, because I know what I will share with you today is more on the Doc Rose side. You will see what I mean by that. Growing up, you have met many persons of different backgrounds and culture. Uh, most likely, even if you uh, came from an area that most of you, you know, had similarities, there's always some type of difference uh, that separates you from this personality or that personality. It may even deal with, you know, physical proudness and academics, uh, such as uh, grades in school. And one person you may encounter, if not many, is someone who is highly educated. Well, going on from middle school to high school, yes, they take advanced subjects. And even in those advanced subjects, they still make straight A's in that. And so what a feat that happens to be. Now, maybe you experience something like this. And I'm going to give you the concluding answer or statement of what you can say to such a person. And then I'll give you some verses as to why. What is that? Well, the concluding answer is sometimes all you can do is just leave the person with a positive. You just keep doing good. And hopefully everything that we talked about will be revealed to you otherwise. What type of person this may be the outlook on or the statement that you have to conclude them with? Well, there was once a man, uh, well, again, still in high school, you know, advanced uh, subjects uh, were taken and, you know, good grades were made, A's still, even in those subjects. And he had a question still about God. And he wondered why he, <laughs> you know, could not find proof that there was a God. And he had conversations with <coughs> different people. And one person that he was kind of fascinated with because of his strong faith in God, even though he felt like, boy, you believe in God, but you don't have no proof at all. They had conversations <coughs> going back and forth. And of course, you know, one of the arguments that he happened to use was evolution and things of that nature. And so at this time, uh, you know, the person who had a strong faith in God uh, <coughs> really did try to explain this or that with the knowledge uh, that he had at the time. OK, now, with that being said, the conversation still didn't change either ones of their minds. But you <coughs> know what that bit of experience gave the one who did have a strong faith in God, which he continued to see from time to time. <coughs> and excuse me, you know, I, I drink coffee just before I started this and I kind of got something in my uh, throat along or something. But what he came away with was that he could see this person and persons that he would later encounter in life as <coughs> as ones who... You know, this person doesn't believe in God, but you can see they want to believe in God. Now, isn't that something? You ever run into somebody like that? And so in order to leave them with some encouragement, you may just say, well, just keep doing the best research you can. Keep uh, doing good. And if you have a question, you can ask me. OK, <laughs> sometimes that's all you can do. Now, why is that the case that we run into persons and God sound nothing like, you know, just like really a fairy tale 
or even uh, may even say his words in the Bible are fairy tales as well, which, you know, I would stay adamantly uh, with assurance and confidence when I tell you that they're not, that they really are God's words. Uh, he used men as like secretaries to inspire them. He allowed them to even express their own experiences in their of life. You know, I use King Solomon as one of them, one who experienced every type of uh, pleasure that you can at that time, you see, of life, and then put his conclusion of what he found out about it. And he found out with all his intelligence and all his enjoying pleasures of life, that still the most important thing in life was to get to know God and please him by doing his will. Now, isn't that something? And and that was the real satisfaction that he knew of. Some persons uh, may be to the point where, no, they are not thinking about God at all. And there are ones who were straight up ridicule ones who... Uh, try to learn about God and put their faith in God. Why does this happen? Well, if you were to turn right now to John chapter 6, in John chapter 6, Jesus stated clearly in verse 44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. And I like to share this verse with persons when sometimes they, you know, God has done a grand thing of a, a very loving, magnificent thing in providing his son, Jesus, for us to be forgiven for our, for our sins, you see, and be able to restore back uh, to perfect health being able to live longer than a tree, which means living forever, and spiritually be sound in mind as well, you see. So this is a great offer. And sometimes, you know, as uh, he sends his messengers to ones, uh, they may view God as, uh, again, uh, not worth their time. And as if God is begging them, you see, like they need them or what have you. And that's not really the case at all. And so I'd like to share this verse uh, that there are some, and this is factual, that the reason why they won't get it is because according to John chapter 6, verse 44, the principle is, no, the statement, the fact is, no one can go to Jesus anyway unless God draws them. So, what does that tell you? Thank you for being here. You have a wonderful day. You have just listened to the Perceptive Readers Podcast. Remember, until next time, if you read something that encourages you to improve or enhance your life for the better, it becomes your reality. So, Doc Rose or Frappuccino? You decide.